Hajime Kashimo is one of the strongest characters in Jujutsu Kaisen, but he is also one of the best written, a character that fulfilled his role in the story, being the final piece to Gojo and Tsukuna's parallel, showing us a different perspective within the dynamic of the strongest. But even though he fulfilled his purpose, his character was still underutilized, a character that could have had the potential to be as good as Gojo and Tsukuna even after being introduced over 150 chapters later. In this video, we're going to be discussing what makes Kashimo's character amazing, as well as what could have made him even better. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe, but only if you enjoy. And now, let's get into it. Kashimo's introduction is already one of the coldest in the series, already being established as one of the biggest threats in the series, somebody who had already killed at least 40 players in the calling game. And the only thing that we knew about his character is that he was looking for a strong opponent. That in itself already makes the character somehow interesting but now we needed to find out what it was actually about and this panel right here is definitely one of my favorites in the whole series he then proceeds to run into panda a couple chapters later even though panda almost managed to escape by pretending that it was just a regular panda kashimo was actually way smarter than he thought because just to be sure he still asked his kogane if that was a player the second he got his answer it was already over for panda even though panda tried fighting back kashimo completely destroyed him and even when he pulled out his final form the third core that had never been revealed before he simply got one shot in this right here was supposed to show us that it was on a whole different level but before he could finish him off akari enters the scene this ends up turning into one of the best fight in jujutsu kaisen in terms of straight action this fight made a big portion of the fan base fall in love with either kashimo or hakari for me kashimo was my favorite character and akari was the second during the fight we got to see a bit of kashimo's past him sitting down next to a pile of bodies bored because he was never able to find the challenge being by far the strongest in his era nobody could ever compared to him. We then see Kenjaku coming to visit him, with Kashimo regretting not fighting him when he was younger, but he still decides to hear him out. Kenjaku brings a proposition to him, something that would give him the opportunity to fight the strongest in history, Ryom and Sukuna. Kashimo, without even hesitating, decides to accept the proposition, accepting to be reincarnated in the future just so he can have a fight with Sukuna. Even though the scene was pretty short, we still get to understand why he's so obsessed by strength and especially by Sukuna, because that was the only character that would 100 percent guarantee his satisfaction at the end of the fight kashimo and hakaru were both alive but on the same side because in exchange for kashimo's point hakaru promised that he would let him fight Sukuna, who was in yuji at the time but of course things turned out to be a little different at the time what made his character so likable was his strength and his mindset but the main thing was the mystery that was around his character because at the end of his fight against hakari it reveals that he wasn't using his curse technique at all so everything he was doing with his unblockable attacks or his sure hits or whatever was just him using his curse energy properties that in itself made his character so promising seeing a character that could rival hakari who was said to be some form of a rival to yuta be dominated like this and even though he won the fight even he doesn't consider it a win we know that kashimo didn't even take that much damage and dealt so much to hakari almost killing him three times this was all without the use of his curse technique from that point on there have been multiple theories about what his curse technique could be as it was said to be a one-time use i personally thought that it was something that would give him a chance against sukuna but i was proven wrong later on when that fight happened and even though at first it kind of killed my hype for the series with time i started understanding and appreciating his ending a little bit more. The scene in the afterlife with Kashimo and Sukuna was nothing but beautiful. We got to learn a little bit more about Sukuna's philosophy and how he decides to do things. We got to see Sukuna show some respect to Kashimo, explaining to him why he wasn't understanding about his own strength or even the fact that he fought him seriously. A lot of people like to say that he was completely holding back against him but I completely disagree with that. The whole point of this fight was Kashimo looking for answers and Sukuna telling him that he was going to teach him. The lesson that he was trying to teach him and that he explained to him in the afterlife was literally the fact that he showed respect to everybody that challenged them without neglecting anything fought them all with respect which is all they could have asked for even though they died it wouldn't make sense for Sukuna to not do the same thing against them because in that case what is he teaching him which will explain why Sukuna is refraining from killing everybody else in the cast at the moment but against Kashimo he didn't hesitate once to use his word ending slashes against everybody else he's just looking for their potential seeing if they're interesting or just playing around with them. Against Kashimo, he was trying to teach him a lesson. As we've seen with Sukuna
that multiple times, he never fails to ask his opponent to try harder, ask them to put in more thought into attacking them. For example, against Jogo, telling him multiple times that he should try harder, all this for Jogo to land one hit. Or even against Igoroma, cutting his arm, waiting for him to regenerate, telling him to learn reverse curse technique on the spot. Tsukuna is always experimenting when he is in a fight. The reason why he didn't do that against Gojo is simply because Gojo is that strong, but the reason why he didn't do it against Kashimo was probably also because he is strong, but mainly because Tsukuna had a different mindset approaching this fight specifically. In my mind, none of the things that happened yet proves that Kashimo is below anybody else in the cast, so for me, he's still at number 3. I'm not as stubborn that I wouldn't accept facts when they come. The moment we get some statements or feats that make somebody above Kashimo, I wouldn't have any problem accepting it. I just feel like nothing that happened yet proves anything. Kashimo's role in the story was one of the most important ones. As we've seen in the fight opposing Gojo to Sukuna, they were not only both looking for something similar, but also for something different. Both of them wanted to fight a strong opponent. Winning or losing wasn't really the problem here. It was all about them having a good time and enjoying this fight, which is why we could see Gojo in his afterlife scene, saying that he was disappointed in itself for not pushing Sukuna far enough because he got to have his fun and he thought that he couldn't allow Sukuna to have his fun. But in the real world, we get to see Sukuna praising Gojo for allowing him to have his fun. And even though that isn't mentioned, I feel like it is fair to assume that Sukuna gave Gojo the death he wanted and he was happy about that. At the same time, Gojo came in this fight to show off. Gojo came in this fight so his students can watch him, learn from him, and admire him. This makes me think that him saying that hard win was probably not even him thinking that he was actually going to win. It is just him showing off as usual. Even though his students weren't there, that could just be him showing off for us showing up for his fans. Another instance of this is during the fight against Sukuna. After Sukuna's domain expansion also got disabled right after Gojo's, we see Gojo saying my students are watching so I have to show off a little bit. And this time his students were actually looking at it, but I feel like that statement was also meant for the fans. This fight was basically for Gojo to go out in style, while for Sukuna this fight was for him to evolve, for him to become a stronger being, stronger than what he already is. This is why he didn't care about anything that was going on outside of them two fighting, and he didn't hesitate to use any methods that would carry him to victory, coming up with all sorts of plans to win the fight, while Gojo didn't even have a plan. Gojo is showing us his mindset as the strongest. He wants to nurture a new generation, a generation of sorcerers that doesn't need him, that can defend themselves. He wanted them to see him shine, he wanted them to become better than he was. He just wanted to use his power for a greater purpose. Tsukuna on the other hand only cares about getting stronger. Even though he was already the strongest, he still wanted to become even stronger. He used all sorts of methods requiring Megumi's body and Gojo as an opponent, all this to become an even more perfect being. Kashimo in this situation is here to show us another perspective. While being the strongest, he was just lost, didn't care about getting stronger, didn't care about using his power for something greater, he was just bored, looking for a purpose, a strong opponent that would be able to either defeat him or at least give him a challenge, which is why he was looking for Sukuna this whole time. And after finding him, he asked him a question, how do you have compassion for something that is weaker than you. In Kashimo's eyes, his strength is a curse, basically something that forces him to be lonely, something that forces him to have no equal and no entertainment, something that completely destroys his purpose in life. Every opponent, human, or anything else was just a pile of dust to him. Nothing held any value. The reason why Sukuna compares him to Gojo and calls them both extravagant is because he also knows that solitude of being the strongest. But for him, the strength is a blessing. He enjoys being strong and will strive to even get stronger. But Gojo Gojo and Kashimo are complaining about this blessing, which is why Sukuna calls them extravagant. What he wanted to teach Kashimo is that his strength was nothing but a blessing, and that even knowing they would die, everybody still came to him to challenge him. All this so they could be acknowledged by somebody that is so strong. Everybody admires that strength. Everybody wants to be like them yet they are complaining about what everybody else would wish for. One thing that a lot of people aren't noticing is that Yorozu was also a piece in this puzzle. Yorozu wanted to teach Sukuna about love, yet Sukuna said that he already knows about love and it's worthless. He said that she should have tried to teach that to Kashimo or Gojo. These are characters that actually had a problem with being alone, and Yorozu could have had a chance to teach something to those two if she was strong enough. But for Sukuna, there was no way for that. He doesn't care about love, he thinks it is worthless. Even though he is alone, he does 
doesn't care about the solitude. He just enjoys being strong and doing whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it. I would explain more on Yorozu's case, but I feel like this is for a different video. Go and stay tuned if you want to see this in the near future. But to get back on topic, in the end, Kashimo understands what Sukuna was saying. We don't exactly know how he feels about it because he never gave any answer, but we see that he was impressed by the mindset. So we at least know that he understood what Sukuna was trying to tell him. There's no character in the series that managed to actually understand Sukuna at such a deep level. Even Yorozu who tried so hard to do it was never able to. Of course I'm excluding Yurami and Kenjaku because they are close to Sukuna, that is something different. Gojo for his strength alone was able to impress Sukuna and allow him to have so much fun during the fight, allowing him to learn something new and to evolve as a being, something that nobody else could have done. Kashimo, even while not being that strong, Sukuna understands his position. Sukuna and Kashimo are basically the same person. The only difference is that Sukuna understands the position that he is in. As cool as Sukuna can be at times, he still respects strength and understands Kashimo fully, which is why he cared so much about telling him this much. Kashimo was essential because nobody else in the series had the ability to get those answers out of him. Gojo simply did not care and nobody else was able to do that. Sukuna gives us the opportunity to understand that the reason why he is so strong is because he embraces his strength. Kashimo is basically rejecting the blessing that he has. A good example that I came up with would be to say that Kashimo and Sukuna could have been at the same strength when they were both 20 years old. Kashimo decided to stay at this point and never evolve, while Sukuna decided to continue and get stronger and stronger, which is why the difference between them is so big. And Gojo's strength at the same age as them was way higher, but he also decided to stop improving to focus on something else, which allowed Sukuna to ultimately surpass him. And while I feel like he played his role perfectly, there could have been more than just that to his character. I genuinely think that Kashimo could have been shown as way stronger in the series. Trying to make a parallel with all three of the strongest would have been even better if all three were close in strength. Him being weaker kind of feels like Kashimo is not part of the conversation. It almost feels like it is forced. What if the reason why Sugna was able to understand Kashimo's situation was because of Kashimo landing some punches on him? Kashimo showing him his real strength, Sugna understanding it, witnessing it taking actual damage but in the end still being stronger and now having the ability to teach Kashimo about it. Kashimo not being comparable to him in strength kinda ruins that part for me. His character would have also been way more likable and interesting if we got to see a cool fight from him because now Kashimo is dead with only one good fight to his belt. His first fight was just him brutalizing Panda and his last fight was just him being brutalized by Sukuna. There were so many interesting factors about his character yet we couldn't actually get to see this potential being expanded on. We couldn't get to see an impressive display from Kashimo, something that would make him even colder as a character. He would have also contributed to Sukuna's defeat by dealing some good damage to him. Another thing that I would have loved would be for Kashimo to have a conversation or a little fight with Gojo before the fight against Sukuna. Just seeing everybody training with each other during the time skip and Gojo and Kashimo having some form of conversation. We know that Kashimo was looking for the strongest who was Sukuna, but now that he was introduced to Gojo who was also the strongest, a character that was in the same position as him. He could have asked him for his perspective. Then learning from Gojo's perspective, he would have still went to talk to Sukuna to learn his. In the end, while dying, he could have had both perspectives in his mind, thinking about his encounter with the strongest of other eras. And that would have also made a lot of sense why Kashima would allow Gojo to fight first, because he understands him and he knows Gojo is looking for something currently, but he still knows that he will have his turn so he allowed them to do it. Kashimo and Gojo being so similar yet never having a communication with each other, even though they should have been in the same vicinity during this time period, this sounds a bit like wasted potential to me. Another thing that I would have loved was for Kashimo to kind of get along with the people from the present. Like imagine Kashimo helping teaching Yuji, but not because he likes him, or not even because he decided to be nice. Simply him witnessing somebody else who is looking for strength, and simply having respect for that, it would teach him, but in a very rude and cold way, but Yuji would still be grateful for learning from him. Kashimo wouldn't have to talk to anybody or be close to anybody, but simply contribute to their training because he respects their strength. The last thing that I would have needed for him would have been a longer backstory. Something about his childhood and how he became so strong. Overall, Kashimo is simply a cool character. He is my favorite character, but being completely unbiased, there is not much for you to get attached to him. His personality and mindset is very cool, his abilities are cool, and his strength is impressive. But character-wise, we 
don't have enough for him to be considered like such a great character. Look what we did with Higuruma for example. Seeing his parallel with Yuji, how he wants to die because he feels like he has sinned. Seeing his backstory and how things went down for him as a sorcerer. Feel like Kashimo should have got the same treatment that Takaba and Higuruma got. Even though Kashimo is still cooler to me, there is not much death in this character and I am forced to admit that. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe but only if you enjoy and I will see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. See ya.